Okay. <clears throat> What's the hair doing? Crazy stuff. Crazy. Crazy hair. Am I in the middle? I shouldn't be. That's not my spot. This is my spot. This is my spot. Maybe I could do. Oh. I don't like it. Can people hear me? Yeah. 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 Whoa. Whoa. <gasps> Camera's dying. Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. I am here today with another solo video. I'm all by myself, just me. Empty space. Well, I'll leave the space because that's Jeff's spot. That's where he sits. But today I am, like I said, doing a solo video. And today's video is all about button shy games. Once again, I wanted to do almost like a mini board game snapshot. Ja, about some button shy games that I've been playing recently and more specifically some solo button shy games that I've been playing recently. Let's get started, shall we? So the first game that I wanted to talk about today is Naturopolis. And this was sent to me by Button Shy for review. So thank you so much to Button Shy for sending this along. And a huge shout out to Michelle from Second Star to the left because she is the reason why I'm able to get review games from Button Shy because they ship them to her and then she ships them to me because she is a superstar. Let's talk a little bit about Natropolis. Now, this is a different version of Sprawlopolis, which is a game that I also own and have also played. There's a bunch of different versions of these Opolis games. So there's Sprawlopolis, there's Agropolis, which is like a farm type version. Sprawlopolis is like a city type version. Natropolis is a nature type of version. You guessed it. Good guess. There's also one that's either out or coming out called Combopolis. And to be honest, I don't know a ton about that, but it sounds like it might be a combo of some stuff. So essentially in Natureopolis, you got 18 cards. Okay. Now this can be played between one and four people. I've only ever played it solo. So just so you know, my opinions are only on the solo game. You're going to choose three of these cards. All of the cards are double-sided. On one side you've got your scenery and then on the other side you've got some scoring goals. So basically you're going to randomly select three of these and then these are different scoring objectives that you're going to try to get throughout the game. They also each have a number in a flower at the top of the card and that combined number is going to tell you how many points you need to achieve in order to have won the game. So as an example, the sniff or swim, 14, straight and narrow is five points and Natropolis is 18 points. So for this one, let's do math. So in this combo, you need a total of 37 points in order to win the game. So those are just kind of like set out to the side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to draw a hand of three of the pattern cards. From now on, you're only using the cards pattern side up. And one at a time, you're going to be placing one of these cards into a grid this way. Not this way, this way. Placement rules are pretty simple. It needs to be adjacent to at least one other square pattern. You can overlap them and you can rotate them 180 degrees and place them out however you want. You are trying to get groupings of the same patterns, kind of like that. So we've got water, water, tree, tree, or if we were to overlap them like so, look at that. We got cement, probably not cement, mountains and pink stuff. So that's basically what you're trying to do because at the end of the game, you're going to be scoring for your largest group of a certain type of landscape. So your largest group of water, you're gonna be scoring your largest group of forest and stuff. For each of the roads in Naturopolis, you are going to score negative two points. Why? Because we're in nature. Stop driving through nature, okay? That's just not what you wanna do. And then the rest of the scoring is going to come off of the scoring objective cards. That's it. 
The game plays pretty quickly. It is easy to learn, but it definitely not easy to win because the cards that you're going to be drawing, so once you lay a card, you'll draw a new card from the deck and so on. You continue until all the cards are played out. I think there's 15 cards that will get played out. And then you just score them. And so, yeah, definitely easy to learn, easy to play but this one is going to kind of come in the hard to master category because you are trying to focus on so many different things. You wanna make sure that you're getting good groupings. You wanna make sure that your roads are getting covered up or you wanna make sure that you're scoring some of these things. I love this game. Like I love this game. When I played Sprawlopolis, I liked it. I don't know why for some reason I like this one even more. Maybe it's the theme. I don't know. I prefer nature to a city, I suppose. But if you are looking for a really good solo puzzle, I would definitely recommend Naturopolis and Sprawlopolis for that matter, which now after playing this just makes me want to play it again. I have no idea how this plays with more people, but I assume that it would be, it would be equally as fun, but much quicker. It literally plays in 15 minutes. Like it is so quick. And I do think this would be a great travel game because I think you could play this on an airplane tray, which is kind of a big bonus to me specifically for the button shy games because obviously these are the games that I wanna take with me when I travel because they take up no room. Also, for anybody that's interested, I randomly will do kind of like solo streams where I stream myself playing solo button shy games. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely follow us on Twitch. Why the heck not, right? The next game I wanted to talk about is called Tides. Look at this pretty summery color, love it. I did purchase this one myself and I do have the Fun in the Sun expansion, though I don't think that I've played with that expansion. So Tides is a game for one to two players. If you are playing solo, it does come with like kind of like an AI mode, whereas something like Naturopolis is no matter what, you're still playing like the same game. You're just playing to score a certain amount of points. This one, you are playing against an AI. There's the AI card. Basically in Tides, you are laying out different cards in a beach and you're gonna be laying them out either during low tide or high tide. On the low tide side, you've got different types of items that one might find on the beach. There's like sea glass and driftwood and I assume rocks and shells and stuff like that. And so that's what you're doing when it's low tide, you're kind of searching for these items, you're collecting these items. Then when we switch over to high tide, it's gonna give you different scoring objectives. So on this card, you can score either the top row during high tide, or you could score this bottom row during low tide, depending on the types of items that you're gathering. So to score seven points, you would need four driftwood, or if you could get six driftwood and two rocks, it's 13 points, or if you can get eight driftwood and four rocks, it's 19 points. That's basically the game. You're just going back and forth between low tide, high tide, low tide, high tide, and then you're scoring your points. So relatively simple, straightforward game. I do have to say, not my favorite of the solo games that I've played from Button Shy. I think it's fine, but I do think this one would play best at two players, mainly because it's just a lot of, not a lot, I shouldn't say that. It's there's some management with the AI player. And generally speaking, like if I want to play like a quick, solo button shy game. I don't really want to be thinking that much about the AI player. So basically like you have to be collecting cards for the AI player as you're collecting cards, but they're kind of scoring a bit more frequently and, and that kind of thing. It's really not that complicated. Relatively, once again, quick to learn, quick to play. It plays in around 20 minutes. It would be something that you could play on an airplane tray, once again, you know you love to see it, but it's beautiful, really cute art, and very, very summery. Moving right along to Wonder Tales. Wonder Tales is another one that I purchased myself, and I got Wonder Tales and Tides in the like big restock that they most recently did. So for Wonder Tales, I do have two expansions. I have the Rumpelstiltskin solo expansion as well as the Magic and Mayhem expansion. I have not used Magic and Mayhem, but I most certainly have used the Rumpelstiltskin solo expansion. Believe it or not, it's an 18 card game. I know, we're all shocked by that. In Wonder Tales, you are playing out a kind of like 
fairy tale in a grid form. I have played this at both one player, so solo, as well as two players with Jeff. And what I will say is Jeff really liked this game, which I was really happy about. I'm gonna give you the overview of the game and then talk about how it plays a little bit differently in a solo game. So you've got a deck of cards here with different fairy tale characters. We've got Hansel, Goldilocks, the Big Bad Wolf, you know, Grandma, Mama Bear, Prince Frog, Princess, Little Red Riding Hood, a witch, all of those things. These cards are all the exact same front and back with the exception of the color. One person is going to be playing as the blue player, one person is going to be playing as the red player. So the game is played over three rounds and each round you are building out a different shape of a grid of cards. I have no idea if you can see that, but the first time you're doing a five by three grid, then you're doing a four by four, and then you're doing kind of like a pyramid. So you just have to follow those placement rules. So long as you're placing your card out somehow adjacent to a card that's already been played and it fits within that grid, those are the placement rules. Each of these cards has different like scoring mechanisms. As an example, Hansel gets plus three points if he's next to Gretel, but he gets negative five points if he's next to the witch because she wants to eat him. And that just makes sense to me. You are gonna go as the red player, then the blue player is going to play something out. Red player, blue player, red player, blue player, etc. And then at the end of the round, once the grid has completely been built out, you are scoring points based off of what has been put out in the grid. That's the game and it's the best two out of three. And it is really, really sweet. So like, as an example, there's three little pigs in here, of course. One of the little pigs gets plus five points if they're, if all of the three little pigs are connected somehow. Goldilocks scores plus three points if not connected to Mama Bear, Papa Bear, or Baby Bear, right? Because she doesn't want to get eaten. So the way that this plays differently in a solo game is you are just playing out a card for Rumpelstiltskin as the AI, he needs to place his card out adjacent, if he can, to the card that was just played. And if he can't, then in the next available space or somewhere where he's surrounded by more of your cards. So I always play as blue, so Rumpelstiltskin will play as red. That means he needs to be as next to as many blue cards as he can. And then Rumpelstiltskin actually starts out with 50 points and you start out with zero. I know. Doesn't sound fair because it's not, because he's a bit of a butt. That's how the game is played and you are just scoring it out, just like you would in a two player game. And the reason why Rumpelstiltskin starts off with more points is because he has no control over what card he places out, where he places the card. So it just kind of gives a little bit of an advantage there. This game is freaking fantastic. I love it. I love fairy tales. I love the theme. It is awesome at one player because the AI is not overly complicated. It's just as great at two players. I would definitely highly recommend this. The artwork is amazing. The cards are fun and it's quick. It takes like 20 minutes to play and maybe even less if you are not so great and somebody beats you in the first two rounds. Not that that's happened to me. This one would be a little bit harder to fit on an airplane tray, but you might be able to make it work. This would still be a great travel game though. Especially if you're going to Disney. Get yourself on that fairy tale mood, people. Okay, next up we have At the Helm. Now this one was also sent to me from Button Shy for review. So thank you to Button Shy. This is one that I was really, really excited to play. They did also send me two of the expansions, the Port Amalga, Port, Port Amalga? I don't know how to say it and Lazarette expansions. I have played with the Lazarette. I have not yet played with Port Amalga. This is a solo only game where you are playing as a ship captain or a sea captain or captain of boats and stuff. It does come with a male captain as well as female captain. So at the beginning, you just pick whichever one you want to be. First thing that you're going to do in this game, you've got these four scoring objective cards. They are double-sided. So you're going to randomly select three of them that you're going to score. And then the other one is gonna be used to track your scoring. So this one, as an example, would be put horizontally and it's got these little like diamonds that help you to track as you complete your objectives. So it's nice that they give you like four different, they're double-sided, so there's lots of variety there. 
Then you are going to be taking in, there's some starting cards that you take into your hand. This is a bit of a deck building game, which is a really interesting thing to have with an 18 card game. So you've got some of your starting cards and then with the rest of the cards, you are building out a bit of a market, four by two grid. So you've got eight cards in the market that you are able to purchase throughout the game. The cards are going to give you different things that you're able to do. So as an example, one of the starting cards is the pearl and it gives you a coin. With the coin, it allows you to buy something from the market that you get to put into your discard pile that then gets added into your deck that you can use later. You are trying to complete the three objectives that you have pulled. Here's some examples. This one is called Rescue Survivors. It is telling you that you must complete this either first or second of your three objectives and you have to do it by paying 10 hearts. So throughout the game, you are going to be getting hurt and losing hearts. The dog, as an example, loses you two hearts on your captain. So you could see around, there's like seven, six, five, four. So every time he loses a heart, you just kind of go beep up, beep up. And then if your captain dies, you lose the game. So you can either spend your hearts to heal your captain, or you can spend them on this card in order to move the objective forward until you do that 10 times. So the objectives are all different and the cards all give you different abilities. The dog, as an example, allows you to retrieve any card from the discard pile and place it in your hand. That's basically it. So you are going through until you either complete all of your objectives or your captain, Guys. Now in the expansion, it's going to give you a few extra cards and you are going to be forming what they call a shipyard. So you can actually purchase cards from the shipyard for two coins. What I have found is that I find it really, really hard to even get two coins. The only, because there's only a couple of cards that actually give you coins. So that might just be me not playing it correctly, who knows, but I found that when I played with the shipyard, I didn't even bother with it. But on your turn, you get to play either one or two cards. You completely fulfill what they say or you can pass. That's the game. It's relatively simple. It's really cool because like I said, it's a deck building game with 18 cards. I love that. And there's so much variety because you have all of these different objectives. And then once again, with the other expansion, the Port Amalga, that I don't know how to pronounce, it adds a whole other element, which is a location. So haven't played with that yet, but excited to. What I have heard when I post it in the Discord, and by the way, if you haven't joined the Discord, you definitely should. We have an entire channel in the Discord dedicated to button shy games. But what I have heard is that this is actually not people's favorite button shy game. I was really surprised by that because I actually really, really enjoyed it. Like I thought it was great. So if you're asking me, I think this game is great. I think that some people in the discord were like, eh, it was just okay. But I really, really enjoy it. I like that it's kind of like a small little deck building game. Last one that I wanted to talk about today is I believe what I believe to be my new favorite solo button shy game and that is Numsters. I purchased this one myself. I got it in their Kickstarter, and I don't know if there's any expansions. If there are, I unfortunately don't have them, but just look at the card art. So Numsters is, I would put it in a very similar realm to Food Chain Island if you played that, but essentially it's following that, you know, the old folklore of seven, eight, nine. Why is you know, eight afraid of whatever, because seven, eight, nine, that kind of thing. And essentially what you're doing is you're going to start off, you're going to start off with six cards in your hand, and then you're going to add in the eight card. And then you're just going to shuffle those up. Now, how the game is supposed to be played or how you can play it is you just play with them in kind of like a stack in your hand like this. What I like to do is I like to lay them out flat in front of me because it's just easier for me to see. But basically what you're going to do in the game is you are trying to get smaller numbers to eat larger numbers. And they have to do that and they can only do that if eight, the eight card is in between them. In this example, I could have 13 eat 14. So 13 has eaten 14 yum, 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 yum. and then you add a new card 
to the front of your hand. Pretty simple. What you can also do and on your turn is you can actually move one of the cards. So you could move the eight, you could move one of the number cards and you can reposition them. And then finally, the other thing that you can do is you can do the special ability of the card that's on top. So the 15 said an even numster eats a double digit numster. Okay, so what you want to do, let's just say I would then move my eight here between the four and the 18. Then I would trigger this 15 and even numster eats a double digit. That means the four can eat the 18. Um, num, 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 num. However, if I did that, this is a good example, I then need to move this card that I used to the back. It doesn't get discarded, it just moves. If I had done that, I would have lost the game because if at any point the eight is on top, you lose. So you don't want that. So basically that's where the strategy comes in. So you're trying to put the eight in certain spots. You're trying to work with these cards. You're adding cards to your hand. And what you are trying to do is go through the entire deck and you win if this is the situation. If you have one numster with the mouth underneath it, that's how you win. Have I ever won? No. Have I come close? A little, but not really. So I have, I think the closest I've ever gotten is I've had two other cards in with the numster, basically, or with the number eight. This is so much fun. When I sit down to play this, I will play it over and over and over and over and over again. Like I will literally play it at least five or six times in a row. It is addicting. It is so much fun. You could definitely play this on an airplane tray. 100% this game is coming with me wherever I go. It has been, re it has replaced my favorite solo button shy game, which probably would have been Food Chain Island, which I do still love. So don't get it twisted. It's beautiful, it's fun, it's quick, it's silly. I love it, I love it, I love it. If you are able to find a copy of this, I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. So those are five solo button shy games that I wanted to talk to you guys about. And let me know maybe down in the comments, are there some other button shy games that you would like reviews on? As you guys know, I have a relatively decent sized collection of button shies. If you wanna see some of the two player, the higher player ones, that might encourage, you know, maybe I can convince Jeff to play them with me. I do think we are gonna do like a full button shy like game day where all we play is button shy games because that sounds like fun to me. But let me know down below if you have tried any of these. I'd love to know what your favorite solo button shy game is. Once again, join me on Twitch if you'd like to see me play some of these solo live. Um, would love to have you there. But that's everything that I have for today. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, generally not button shy games. You gotta buy those on their website or there's a few other stores that might have them. But not all of our friendly local gaming stores have them. But for other games, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is the Boardroom Game Cafe. If you're interested in snacks, try Munch Pack. Um, nom nom nom. Get it, numsters? Because it, it, they're eating stuff. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Hope to see you again soon. And now I say goodbye. Goodbye. Good timing because the battery is lit, lit early about to die. This table is so crooked. I can't see enough of this. I think I made it worse. Like, what? This side maybe needs to come up. No. This all looks wrong. It's all wrong. It's all crooked. The floor is crooked. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple. Can you see this cord? So, she's uh, a way slippery. Oh my God, my God, my God. Oh, poor lady.